In this Blender video, I'll show you how to connect particles together to create this animation. I'll be using Blender version 2.90. Let's start by adding a mesh sphere. The particles are going to be emitted from the surface of the sphere for the first 100 frames of the animation. During this time, the particles will not be moving. However, the sphere will be growing in size so that the particles will start being produced in a small area and finish being produced in a larger area. So let's animate the size of the sphere. Start by making sure that the timeline is at frame 1. Then set a keyframe by pressing I and select Scale. Now move to frame 100. Scale the sphere up in size by pressing S, then 3, then Enter. Then press I and select Scale. If I play it, you can see the sphere grow. Next, we'll add the particles. So switch to the Particle tab and click the plus button to add a particle system. Set the number of particles to 100. Set the frame end value to 100. To make sure that the particles don't disappear before the end of the animation, set the lifetime value to a number greater than the number of frames in the animation. To prevent the particles from moving, open the Velocity section and set the Normal value to 0. Then open the Field Weight section and set the Gravity value to 0. Now the particles will not move until we enable a couple of force fields, which we'll add now. So add a force force field. We don't want the force field to have any effect until frame 100, so set the timeline to frame 99. Then switch to the Physics tab. Now set the strength to 0 and add a keyframe. An easy way to add a keyframe is to just click the small Animate Property button. Now set the timeline to frame 100. Then change the strength to minus 5 and add a keyframe. Now at frame 100, the force field will turn on. For this particular force field, setting the strength to a negative value will cause the particles to be pulled toward the center of the force field. Next, add a turbulence force field. Then set the timeline to frame 99. Now set the strength to 0 and add a keyframe. Next, set the timeline to frame 100. Then change the strength to 5 and add a keyframe. Now at frame 100, both force fields will turn on. I'll play this, but first I'll switch to wireframe view so that we can see through the sphere. All of the particles are being added for the first 100 frames. Then at frame 100, they start moving. Next, we'll enable the B Tracer add-on, which we'll use to connect the particles together. So from the Edit menu, select Preferences, and then switch to Add-ons. Make sure all is selected, and then type BT in the search box. Then add a check mark next to Add Curve B Tracer to enable it. To use the B Tracer add-on, press N to open the sidebar and switch to the Create tab. Now open the B Tracer section. For the tool, select Particle Connect. Then click the Settings button. To set the number of frames that this tool will use, Remove the check mark from next to Auto Frame Range and make sure that the end value is set to 250. The end of the animation is also going to be at frame 250, so verify the end value is set to 250. Now click the Curve Setting button and change the handle to Automatic. This will give us a smooth curve. Now select the sphere and click the Run button to connect the particles. We don't want the sphere to be visible during the animation, so let's hide it. To do that, click the Filter drop-down menu and enable the button that looks like a camera. Now select the sphere and click the Viewport and Render buttons to hide the curve from the viewport and the final render. I'll switch to Solid View now. This is what it looks like when I play it. The curve is constructed during the first 100 frames, and then the curve starts moving when the force fields are turned on. This is the final rendered animation after adding a floor and setting up the lighting. This is rendered using the Cycles Render Engine with 32 render samples, and I also use denoising to clean up the noise. 
If you don't know how to use denoising, then you can watch my video on the topic. I'll put a link to it in the video description. For those that may not know how to render an animation, I'll put a link to a video for that as well. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.